Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to you all on this blessed Palm Sunday and welcome also to our visitors. Lovely to see you here with us. More information for our visitors. We have a custom in our parish at the end of the Mass. We all kneel and silently say three Hail Marys for the next one amongst us to be called home by God. And we do not take up a collection during the Mass. Instead, we have boxes on the walls that you may use for any donations as you leave. And if you take a bulletin with you, you can access the QR code for our online giving system. So Holy Week is here, and there is a full list of all the events for you to experience a deepening preparation for Easter Sunday. It is on this middle page in the bulletin. And yes, the last line of this article has been cut off. It's about April the 16th, so don't worry, we'll get that information to you next week. Our Mass intention for this Mass is for the special intentions of Jordan Lee Jeremias. Palm Sunday is of such importance, beyond the palms and deeper than the surface appearance. In the silence that follows, I invite you to ponder Christ's journey on an ass with a colt to the temple and what that means for you today. And may God richly bless you. Master has need of them. 
then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to his daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewn them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out, saying, Hosanna to Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord Jesus Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who claim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Our opening hymn is number 496, Home Sunday Processional.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found in human appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. This is my body. 
Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you anew in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night, all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, so you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he turned once more and found them asleep for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to a sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put back your sword into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how would it, the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass 
that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This, this man said, I can destroy the temple of God and who The high priest <coughs> rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men who is defying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, In order you to tell us under oath before the living God, whether I order you to tell us under oath before the living God, whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, you have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Who is this for you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus and Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you are one of them. And with that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. <coughs> then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned, they betray innocent blood. They said, What well, is that to us? Go to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money but said, it is not all to deposit this into the treasury, or is the price of blood? After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver 
the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast of the governor was accustomed to release the crowd to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you wish me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then, what shall I do with Jesus, called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be the Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole, whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Leaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to, admit, to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who will destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself in the Lord of Sinai and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him 
and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him go down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and, putting it on reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see what I shall not save But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this is the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered for it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter was still alive, said, After three days I will bring this up. He had ordered then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come to see him and they say to the Lord, He has raised from the dead, and the last imposter to be resisted in the place. Pilate said to them, the guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard.
Palm Sunday readings, this comes down to everything about Jesus and the last days, the difficulty he's had. <clears throat> Palm Sunday, though, is also called Passion Sunday. Passion Sunday reminds us to think of the passion of Jesus, and he had it for the Father in heaven. But he also has that passion for us, for our salvation, for us to see differently, to go a different way. In this reading from Pilate, I'm going to read part of it again, because this part stands out. There's so much here, I'm only going to focus on a very narrow part today. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, you say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. And Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Jesus stood in power. <clears throat> Jesus was not laying down. He was not groveling. He was not kneeling. He was standing man to man, and he was quiet. Some people call this civil disobedience that the Jewish people learned about. To stand to power, sometimes you have to be silent. One of the things that people often confuse Jesus about was that he was meek and mild and kind of a small stature guy. He was big, very strong, healthy man. Uh, in fact, he would have been very impressive to a lot of the people. We say he was a carpenter, but that's really not a real accurate translation. The Greek word is tekton, which probably more means something like a builder. A builder who worked not only with lumber, but he also worked with stone, laying foundations with stone. So you have to be a strong man to do these things. And here's this strong man standing a towards Pilate. Now Pilate, on the other hand, as we read this, we think he's not that strong of a leader. He wants us all to go away. He's kind of confused. Let me tell you about Pilate. Pilate was a feared man, not only by the Jews, but he was feared by his own people. He had a reputation for being reckless, for going way past the normal stopping points whenever he pursued something. When he first came to Jerusalem, he minted coins uh, to honor the uh, Caesar Augustus. And on the coins it was written, Caesar Augustus, son of God. That was very much a problem for the Jewish people. They were angry about that. He also brought standards into and around the temple uh, that had pagan symbols on them. They got offended by that. Another time, he stole money from the treasury for a public works project. People started to protest that he had done so. He secretly had his men dressed like the peasants, and they mixed among the people with clubs and bludgeoned them. Many people died during that. He had a reputation for evil, for doing things just because he could. Very rarely did he actually want to talk to a prisoner. He went against the Samaritan holy site on Mount Gerzim and destroyed that. He was called back to Rome, and the emperor even found him to be guilty and asked him to kill himself, which he did. So he, this was not a man that would be easily weakened by anything. Yet, Jesus in power is standing to him, facing him, and something about him is afraid of this. You see, the power of God is within him. He's speaking this power of God, and it scares the people who are not on that side. Very similar to this, we had a recent uh, feast day for St. Oscar Romero. St. Oscar Romero was named bishop in San Salvador, in El Salvador. And with the other bishops there, they recommended him because 
He was somebody who would not stir the pot, he wouldn't get involved in things. He was pretty weak, they felt. He would just let the military do what they wanted to do. At this time, the military, there were death squads that they would go out and they would kill people that had said anything about the government. Uh, if you knew somebody who knew somebody, they say your life is forfeit. Many thousands of people were killed by the military. In fact, the United States was supporting them with weapons. Bishop Oscar Romero wrote to them asking them not to give the weapons because it is killing their people. Oscar Romero had a major shift in his understanding of his faith when a fellow priest, a good friend of his, was murdered this way because he spoke out against the military. That was a change for Oscar. He started seeing the truth that the church is here for the poor, for the dispossessed, those who are being bullied by those in life who are and are just struggling to keep going. He stood up for them and the people said, we come to you because you speak for us. One day at mass, he was so tired of all the killings, finding all the people dead. His mass was, his homily and mass were on the radio so people who couldn't make it could hear it. And then during that homily, he spoke against the military. He told the military, Do, these are your brothers who you're killing. You need to stop. It's an illegal law by God's command. Disobey this law and stop the killing. I beg you, I command you stop the killing. The next day, St. Oscar Romero was shot and killed while saying mass. Now, read about it more because there's a whole lot more to this. St. Oscar Romero was standing just like Jesus in that place before power. And his life was forfeit, just like Jesus, but for the salvation of many. In our baptism, we are called into that place. We are called to stand for those who cannot speak for themselves. We're called to stand for the poor, for the lame, those who cannot fight back. We're called to stand against those powers that hurt these people. We are called to walk in that place. And yes, like Jesus, we're going to ask God to take that away from us. But as Jesus, we should remember, we have to give unto the will of the Father. To follow Christ, to call ourselves a Christian, we must be willing to follow the place where he calls us. The world is, is asking us to do that because the world is going in the wrong direction in many ways, just like it was at this time. We rely on the salvation that Christ has given us. Other people rely on their salvation of Christ, sometimes through us. We can't ignore the plight of those without a voice. We know who they are. We cannot be afraid anymore. We must stand up and speak the truth to power, as Christ would have us do. This is our baptismal promise. This is the covenant that Jesus talks about in the Last Supper. This covenant calls us into the truth and not to be afraid to speak it. When we come to communion, we should be honoring that commitment to his covenant of love in this world. That commitment to follow him wherever it leads us even if it leads us to our death. That is the Christian way. That's the only way we can follow Christ.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came out from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and the conscious part. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism of forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Caring for the needs of our brothers and sisters, we offer these petitions. For Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and for all the faithful, that as we begin Holy Week, we embrace all that Jesus offers us in his Eucharist, crucifixion, and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. The Lord For all who hold public office, that they respect the religious freedom of all people. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For those wrongfully accused of crimes, that they may be found innocent and set free, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For Kathy, Ryan, and Michelle, and all those awaiting sacraments of initiation at the Easter Vigil, that their hearts be filled with the Holy Spirit in the coming days. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. For all who teach our faith, that they teach from their hearts, inspired by the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. For our parishes, that we eagerly welcome all that will come for our Easter celebrations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those on our prayer lists, those in our prayer book of requests, for the sick, especially Frank Spina Sr., to know God's love, comfort, and grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Nicolina Topaldos, Giovanni Melorzo, who died this week, for Jordan Lee Jeremias, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all who have died to receive eternal life, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. sacrificing himself for us, may we in turn do what we can to care for all of our brothers and sisters as we offer these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 511, Were You There? <laughs>
in our ceaselessly ever, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offering, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the word of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, he desired to celebrate the Passover as with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed in the cross. He took the chalice, filled it with the fruit of the vine, and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
at the Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Our recessional hymn is number 681, We Remember. 